Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Terry and today I have an exciting new video for you guys. Today I am joined with Jacob Johnson, who is the founder of Glitch Energy Co. This is probably one of my favorite new like energy drink powders. Um, it's, it's a powder, like a little tub, and I freaking love it. So reach out to Jacob, got him to hop on the call for you guys to show you what it's like building a multi seven figure, pretty much like, not say energy drink brand, but energy brand, I know that's the best way I can say it. So yeah, like I said, I use this all the time. You've seen it a few times on my channel. It's called Glitch Energy. I freaking love this stuff. So I want to share it's like building a multi seven figure brand. So let's hop into the video guys. I really want to know too, like starting off, like just your start of your entrepreneurial career, like how did it come about? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, it's kind of a long story. I'll try to keep it as, as brief as possible, yeah. but I've always been entrepreneurial. Um, ever since I was a kid, like even thinking back, like in middle school, um, I was really big into tech, like really nerdy. I was also an athlete. So like, it's kind of a weird combo. Um, and even in middle school, like I was ordering like rapid fire mod chips for Xbox controllers and like modding <laughs> controllers and then like slinging them in a the hallway. Right. Like that's, I always been like super interested in like building and tinkering and creating mm -hmm. things. Um, yeah, what was the game? On, like call of duty, halo. <laughs> exactly. Call of duty. Um, so that's kind of when things started. I, I got really big into like jailbreaking iPhones and like I was doing that for friends and, and, and like charging, I don't know, I was like 20 bucks, like to jailbreak your iPhone. And it was really simple. Like I knew how to do it on my end. It was really mm -hmm. simple, but there's a lot of like research and like insight you had to find out beforehand. So I was kind of playing that arbitrage a little bit, like, and this was middle school early on into high school. Um, and then in high school, I actually started a cryptocurrency mining business with uh, three of my other friends. So um, I had a like those those three friends now are all engineers. And so it's kind of funny, like we were we were from very different like demographics in school, um, but came mm -hmm. together. And now I've, I, we we talked about like cryptocurrency mining. And at the time, that was probably like 2013, 2012, um, when it was just starting to become like known to some of the more tech crowd right and so we started we like pulled our money bought a cryptocurrency miner and started mining dogecoin and it's it kind of sounds like really cheesy now because how much of a meme it is to talk about crypto and nfts like in in the digital space right now but um yeah we mined a bunch of dogecoin and then we were actually like flipping it on ebay for 4x of value so it was really hard to get it and so we were just creating ebay listings for dogecoin and like mm. it was like we were literally like flipping it for four X what it was going on exchanges. And so, and this we was like, even on that, how long ago was this? This was like 2012, 2013. Wow. So yeah, if you do the so math, this is like when Dogecoin was like a hundredth of a penny. <laughs> yeah. It, it was stupid. And yeah, don't, don't remind me. Cause I always do the math occasionally. Cause we pulled a thousand dollars to build this miner between like the four of us. And at the time, Oh, nice shaker, by the way. Sick. <laughs> dude this is actually my second scoop um i had a very very uh i woke up at two o'clock could not go back to sleep so it's my second scoop of glitch um let's go which we're gonna get to in a second because this stuff is absolute gold um but yeah carry on <laughs> love it um so yeah we we pulled a thousand dollars started mining dogecoin um and ended up breaking even and then our our computer actually like our graphics card got burnt out. We had like three graphics cards on the computer and they all like died because we ran it 24 seven overclocked. Mm -hmm. Like it was really, and then we were like leeching off my friend's electricity in his basement and just had it down there and was just constantly mining Dogecoin. Um, fast forward, like last year when Dogecoin really like went to the moon, um, I, we remember we had some in a wallet, like one of my friend, because he kept all of the, the coin and then and flipped it when we were selling it on eBay. And he had like, tens of thousands of doge locked up in a wallet and he couldn't remember the password and like we couldn't get into it and it was probably worth i don't know like 10 or 20 grand so like we've, we've got that in a wallet right now and like can't get into it which is kind of it's it's really funny um so that's kind of like how i started getting into entrepreneurship i just like i like doing cool stuff and building things and creating things and like kind of seeing like what was possible and so early on into college um kind of piggybacked off that vision and interest and 
me and my friend Tanner, who was also a partner in the in the cryptocurrency mining what, business that we what year is this now i know you said about 2012 now yeah, so this is into- like 2014 um we started we we came together and started a drone inspection business and so this was before like drone laws were even in place so he actually mm-hmm. had to go we got uh some financing from his dad to like launch this business and uh we like he was really big into like building drones as well so we built like this soup like huge custom drone that he built and my like my my job was to go out and and sell for us basically and be like <laughs> the you know lead flow essentially and then his job was to do all the the piloting and flying and operations and so um he had to go get his private pilot's license because there was no regulations at the time. Um, and so it took like eight months to even get approved to fly drones commercially because we were just waiting on like approval after he got his private license and working with the government on getting like a, it was called a section 333 approval before mm-hmm. there was actually drone regulations. So uh, we did that through college. Like every summer I was, instead of having an internship, I was literally just working for a drone inspection business and like going, we did a lot of work in construction. So I would I lived in Indianapolis, so I would go and drive around and find construction developments and construction sites that were just starting to do like progress pictures for. And I would literally mm-hmm. walk up with like a hard hat and high vis vest on and and our little company like logo polo. And I was knocking on trailer doors on construction sites. And it was the most uncomfortable thing ever. Uh, but it really taught me like cold calling skills or, or cold sales skills, you know, and um, yeah. just really being, you know, embracing being uncomfortable in those situations that really helped me. Like I learned more through that process than I did through, through college for sure. And so um, my senior year of college, we were like the drone business wasn't at a point we were both going to school full-time and I was a full-time college Mm -hmm. basketball player too. So um, it was really, really tough to balance and really put like a ton of energy to get this off the ground. Um, And so right before we graduated, we were both the same age. We decided to dissolve the drone business. Like it wasn't at a spot where it could afford for us to both go full time. And then I was actually yeah. getting married three months later after graduation. This is probably 2018. And uh, my, my wife wanted to go to grad school out in St. Louis. And so we kind of dissolved it. And then, so I was constantly looking like, okay, what's next. And so uh, that that's where glitch kind of came to fruition where my, one of my teammates and, and good friends, and Zach I played basketball with him he actually grew up with our other partner Tyler who's the the YouTuber by the name of Wildcat mm-hmm. uh, he's got close to 8 million subscribers and had always had that in, in the back of my mind like if there was a if there was a product that like he truly believed in and could get a vested interest in um, that you know we could really have a good launch I think and, and who knows where it could go from there so um, yeah fast forward I called Zach like spring of 2018 I think and this was just an idea at that point and I said like hey I've got this this idea I was big into health and fitness in college and like Mm -hmm. I was just playing dorm room chemist ordering ingredients like trying to put a formula together (laughs) and so it reminds me of uh for a period of time I was um making my own pre-workouts I'd order like supplements online like exactly uh not BCAs but like um the other one that makes you itch uh caffeine pills uh yeah beta alanine big bags of beta alanine and like big bags of caffeine and I was mixing it in like tablespoons together I was making pre-workout like 25 cents a pop right (laughs) Right. yeah so um and that's basically what I was doing. And I came across this ingredient called dynamine, which is a patented ingredient by compound solutions, who's, which is the main, main driver of our product now. And I ordered it raw, like as a raw ingredient, like started mixing it with like water and orange juice. And it was super bitter, like, but I, the effect was amazing. And I was like, okay, this is like what we're going to formulate around. Like, this is a huge, huge innovation in the space. Like it had just released in 2018. So it was a pretty new ingredient, but all the safety studies were phenomenal um, on it as well. And so felt really good about it. And like, I called up Zach right before I graduated and was like, Hey, I've got this idea. Like one, can you like loan us, loan the business? Like one, do you want to be a part of this Two, Can you loan the business like five grand so we can start getting samples? And then three, like, can you set up a meeting with Tyler so we can pitch him on this? And Zach was like, well, funny enough, I just helped him move to Nashville like two weeks ago. And he was just talking to me about getting involved in businesses outside of YouTube. Like he wanted to expand his, his reach and, mm-hmm. and really use his audience for products that he enjoyed being a part of. And so uh, really good timing. Like 
fast forward, things take much, much longer than what you, what you think in business a lot of times, especially to get started. And so fast forward, we did a, especially like you know, the sample yeah, side, like just shed a little light on like the time between samples it takes of getting that in the mail. Like that's like one of the biggest tedious challenges I hear from like every startup. It's super hard. And so the more like the more innovative and like packed your formula is too, the harder it is to flavor because a lot of these ingredients are super bitter. Like they're not easy to flavor. Coloring's a big issue. Like we wanted to go all natural coloring, which um, is a great pitch, but it's a lot harder said than done. And flavoring as well, like dynamine is a very bitter ingredient and being able to flavor using natural flavor to really flavor that accordingly was really, really tough for us early on. So like we would put in a flavor that we, we, we launched in May of 2019, like a soft launch. This was a previous formula of ours. We wanted to get an MVP out there like as soon as we could to just test the market. Um, we launched in May of 2019, that flavor, um, we probably spent six plus months before that, like trying to get it to a spot where we felt confident that like it was an okay flavor to launch. Like we weren't like super pleased with it, but we wanted to get it to market and then make revisions based on customer feedback. And so, um, and anytime you wanted a flavor revision, typically like, I mean, it can take now with our supply chain now, like we've really gotten that more efficient to where we can go in person to our lab and like do 10 different flavors in a day in a few hours and get revisions like in person, which is much, much easier to do um, than waiting on the mail and back and forth. But I mean, you're talking like early on for us, when we were like revising our flavor, it was, you know, weeks, if not months to get like revisions on it. And then you will like, once you're good with the flavor, you sign off on it, put in your purchase for inventory and it might be eight to 12 weeks, you know, or longer depending on supply chain lead times. And so yeah, um, it's really, really tough, especially um, early on to get started. But yeah, so that's that's kind of um, up into May of 2019. Like that's we launched. We spent like $500 on branding. We put together a formula that was basically me playing dorm room chemist early on, <laughs> um, and we felt like decent about it. Um, like the the effect was amazing like some a lot of the ingredients in there were great like it wasn't a perfect product but we felt confident that we can launch it and see get mm-hmm. feedback and so we like tyler i was still working full-time zach was still working full-time um not on glitch and we did a launch in may of 2019 tyler did one video and we did like 50k in in a few weeks and like sold out of our product like we were just bootstrapped at that point like really didn't raise very much capital at all just enough for a minimum order and wow that's dude that's so that, incredible like, that was crazy like we we spent zero dollars in marketing we had no email flow set up we had no literally like your marketing one-on-one stuff like i didn't have a clue about this space like i came from the financial world um i worked as an advisor in, in finance before this and so you know it was a really good learning experience for us and yeah it took us like four months to get restocked because we wanted to revise our flavor a little bit based on feedback and then We restocked like in November of 2019, sold through a majority of that inventory and we're just kind of bootstrapping off cash at that point. And then we kind of realized like Zach Zach and I were still both full-time at our job and we kind of realized like, okay, if we're going to do this the right way, like we need to raise some capital and like really take this serious and like quit our jobs and and go full-time. And because like we knew at that point, like we at least had some product market fit in, in the space just from our previous sales. And Mm -hmm. so early 2020, we decided to raise some capital, um, had a lot of meetings with like angel investors and VCs and um, could never push a deal to the finish line, partly because I think a lot of people were skittish around quarantine and the pandemic. And um, there was a lot of like uncertainty there, especially with some of the angel investors we were talking with. I think also that, you know, one of the things that they probably wouldn't say, but I, I don't think I was that good at pitching at the time either. Like, I don't think like, I really had the experience to, to bring it over the finish line. Like this, this was, I was completely new to, to raising money from a business mm-hmm. standpoint. And so our backup plan was to raise internally through Tyler and like double down on that. And so fall of 2020, we, we got to a point where like, okay, like we got connected with a new manufacturer, felt really good about like helped Dynamines, like their, their compound solutions helped us reformulate and, and, 
put together a really awesome energy powder formula that used dynamine in, in combination with caffeine, which now like there was a study that came out um, last year that talked about in, in the same dosage of our product, dynamine and com combined with caffeine actually extends the half-life of caffeine by twofold. So we can use claims like two times longer caffeine, which is a really big deal, right? Like there's not a lot of companies out there using it, yeah. um, especially in the gaming space. And so that's one thing like, yeah. and look, everyone who's watching this video right now, I'm drinking some right now. I literally got three tubs of this stuff. I freaking love it. Um, I'm a huge fan of Celsius. Um, and then I got this stuff and I love it because one, I get, I get all my water in during the day and get my caffeine in at the same time. And uh, I do have to say, like, there's a lot of different products out there that promote no crash, but this is the first product I truly don't crash after. And I don't know if it's maybe just because it's two times longer caffeine or whatnot, but I noticed when I drank it, I'm just like, really, really cool, but like no crash. It's just kind of like a slow, 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 slow taper throughout the rest of the day uh, when I drink it. So that's what I love about it. Yeah. And that's, uh, I, one, I appreciate the the feedback. That's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we we're going for. Like we've, when we started taking this stuff, like before we launched in February of last year in like a, a full scale launch after we raised internally through Tyler and just went, all in on on inventory basically like we spent probably 95 percent of our financing on inventory and just said like okay we're not dedicating any marketing budget we know that tyler can push this we really mm -hmm. believe in the product and before we even launched i had our manufacturing facility create like a big a big like plastic i don't know bag of of glitch just so i could take it daily because i liked it that much right and this was like yeah. a few months before we launched and so yeah i on that note, like we formulated it one, we wanted dynamine and caffeine to be like the main driver of two times longer caffeine, but we also formulated with a super high dose of tyrosine, which is a, a precursor to dopamine, which really helps with the, the neurotransmitter side of like the, the nootropic uh, effect, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also wanted to have ingredients in there for blood flow, not necessarily for like blood flow as like a pump for a workout, but more blood flow to your brain. Because like the, the thesis there was like, if you can have more blood flow and more oxygen to your brain, ingredients are going to get delivered faster. And then you're going to have, it's going to like hit faster and then be like a much smoother effect effect coming off of it too. And so uh, we use some ingredients for blood flow in different, different um, ways. And then we've got two ingredients that are legitimate antioxidants at, at high dosages and, um, we just wanted to build a full formula with no filler, like be super transparent about our label to where like mm -hmm. any of our competitors saw it and said like, wow, they're paying a premium for their, for their product. And like, it's going to be really hard for them to pivot, to compete with that. And we just said, okay, we're going to take really low customer acquisition costs early on and really try to scale this thing and then get to like economies of scale later on. Really. Yeah, dude, that's freaking incredible. And I really love the fact that like just the way like because your, your product is I know it's more kind of like entrepreneurs and stuff, but it's also kind of more towards like gamers and sense of like your primary demographic. Is that kind of correct? Totally. Yeah, I think our, our big approach there was we didn't want to pigeonhole ourselves as a gaming specific product because mm -hmm. there's especially with Tyler's demographic, like there's a select few people that watch his videos that are also like full-time gaming, let alone like competitive gamers. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to formulate to where like, there was a lot of benefits around that, but it was also like kind of a bridge we, we, basically launching in the gaming space and taking gaming culture and other industries or it's kind of gaming in, in the digital space. There's, you know, undoubtedly gaming is the best place to build a community. You see it with yeah. these creators. Right. And so that was kind of our perspective on it was we want to launch in the gaming space, obviously Tyler and his audience, um, but other, other people that he's connected with and, and not just pigeonhole ourselves on saying, you know, take this to get better at gaming really like genuinely, like we take it all the time. Tyler probably takes mm -hmm. it five, six times a week. And you know, I, I think there's just so many different use cases. We, we really want to hammer on those this coming year and do better about explain, educating people on the product because um, it's, it's way more than just taking it on Friday nights to game with the boys, right? Like that's, that's like a small use case of what's like, obviously, you, you know, and take it for work mm -hmm. and, and feel the effects of that. And 
a lot of people don't like the itchiness of like pre-workouts and beta alanine. And so we've gotten a lot of feedback on people taking it before they work out. Like Tyler uses it for working out too. And um, what's cool about it is because the length of effect is so long is like most pre-workouts, you can take it before you work out. And like an hour and a half later, you're probably like kind of dead from that crash of the pre-workout. Whereas yeah. with glitch, it's like, if you take it in the morning, work out, like, chances are you're going to have energy throughout the day, you know, leading up through lunch, which is a very different use case than a typical pre-workout too. So mm -hmm. like, there's a lot of different angles that we want to explore this year on like use cases, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a product that makes you like helps you be a better gamer, but it's, that's like a small piece of the puzzle, right? Yeah. I think there's a high correlation too, between like the online entrepreneurs and gamers as well, um, to working kind of fall in that community and stuff. Uh, but I think my biggest takeaway from this whole thing right here is the fact that one, you leveraged what you had, you looked around, you were able to like piggyback a product kind of off of like Tyler's YouTube channel, or everything like that. You're able to identify a, a, you know, a really great product market fit right there. Um, and then two, you you took a product that's nothing new essentially, but you made it better. And I think a lot of people think they have to reinvent the whale every single time they launch a product, but that's not the case. There's plenty of products we use on a daily basis. And if you do a little bit of research, you can try to figure out how to make it more better essentially. Um, and you did an 100%. exceptionally well job at that in that case. Well, I appreciate that. And I, I couldn't agree more. I think uh, as we're kind of our plans the next few years is really like launching brands around Tyler and his audience to have like that catalytic type event at launch to scale off of without really investing a lot of dollars into customer acquisition is kind of the thesis there. Mm -hmm. And as we start to think through new ideas and some of the best brands that I've seen, they take a market that hasn't really been innovated in, in quite a while and tweak one aspect of the product and then really scale it. You know, mm -hmm. like you don't have to like the energy, the energy drink space and energy powder formula space is really, really competitive. Like there's so many different products out there around this. And I think for us, it was like a combination of really good branding, a partner that can give us eyeballs at scale with a really authentic promotion and then mm -hmm. having a, an innovative formula, you know, just because a lot of players in the space, um, you know, they've done really well at scaling, especially in the gaming space. But a lot of these other products, for lack of better words, are kind of caffeine Kool-Aid, so to speak. Yeah. Like people like to really, really cut costs and just try to really play off the caffeine benefits, which is pretty, it's a pretty legacy approach to like innovating in the space, right? Like you, you have to do something you, a lot more unique than just like building a product around caffeine. At least that's yeah. if you want to make a true impact and build a product that that lasts, so to speak. Yeah, there's a lot of people starting up these brands, make a quick buck on it, but then yeah, it doesn't really last because there's no competitive advantage to it. So um, obviously you have your own unique competitive advantage. Your branding is something we didn't even touch on, but your branding, uh, your ad side, and you, I know you guys have teamed up with Weekend Digital. You're like, crushing it on the ad side um i love them i'm, I'm always seeing them on like instagram or especially the one where y'all took the uh mclaren and then did like the donuts in it oh yeah um, shout out to chandler that was uh that's his car and um and then uh he, it was the his one, idea too for the record really <laughs> that's yeah. funny um and then the other one where wildcat was doing the uh the donuts on the rv uh the four-wheeler and trying to talk and show the product at the same time like holy shit but it's really fun because it kind of remind me of like a Harmon Brothers ad almost for a second. So, yeah, that was we took a lot of inspiration from Harmon Brothers, Chamber Media um, and the ads that they produce. Like that was that was a big deal for us to like we wanted something that was very polarizing, that had a really good hook at the beginning and and then just hammered home like our holiday sale that a lot of those ads were created for that. But um I know we're running out of time. I'd be yep. down to do yep. a, like a part two of this. Cause I know we haven't hit on, you know, some other <laughs> details and I'm sure that there's some more questions I, I would love to share on, you know, more details around our growth this, this past year, if we want to do a part two, I yeah. do have to run, but um, I appreciate the time. Yeah. Jacob. Um, it was a pleasure having you, man. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's see if we get like 50 likes maybe and drop some comments of which would like uh, Jacob Subscribe. to talk about next uh, video if you want to do a part two. So, um, Jacob, where can people find you? Um, glitch, things like that. Yeah. At, at glitch energy co on all social platforms. Um, glitch energy.co is our website. So, um, feel free to reach out. My email is Jacob at glitch energy.co as well. If you want to reach out directly, I uh, would love to send you some samples. Um, yeah. So, so reach out and would love to chat. 
Cool deal. Well, uh, thank you for having, or thank you for coming on, man. (laughs) I really appreciate it. I know you got to run. So, uh, there's any last words, go ahead. If not, uh, that'll be it, man. Yeah. Let's do a part two. (laughs) Sounds good. Take care. Thanks, Nick. We'll see you.